Hey everyone, welcome to Rugged Outdoors Guide. My name is Pete. Hey, how did you like that entrance, huh? Trying to be unique. Guys, today we're gonna to be talking about something that is really near and dear to my heart. If you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you'll know that I'm into fishing with my canoe. I own a really nice Kevlar Prospector canoe and it, it uh, knew it would cost about 2,500 bucks and then you can deck it all out and I could spend uh, probably $4,000 on it, decking it out for fishing properly. Today I have something that I think is gonna be of great interest to a lot of you because it's affordable and it's way more durable than even the canoes that I have for fishing. And what I'm talking about is a Paluski Adirondack 12 foot six inch fishing canoe with a square stern. It's got three seats in it. It's got oar locks. It's got all kinds of great stuff set up just for fishing or for just recreation. And uh, I, I'm just blown away when I saw this and I, I started to really look at the features of it and then I compared the price and I thought, hey, you know what? It's actually a really good deal. I think some of you will really like it and uh, I'm excited to take it out on the water in a few minutes, but until then, let's go take a quick look at some of the features before we get it out on the water. All right, gang, welcome to my backyard. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll get to the water. Um, also, welcome to the Paluski 12.6 Adirondack Square Stern Fishing and Recreational Canoe. First thing that I really, really like about this canoe is that it has three ways of propelling it. Now, most canoes, even if you try hard and put an additional feature to it, it might give you two. But this one's got three kind of sort of built in. Number one, it's got the square stern, so you've got, you know, a place for a trolling motor. Electric works really well, but so does a uh, gas motor up to about four horsepower, right? That's what it's rated for. But it also has ore locks, and you can get the additional ores for that from Paluski. That'll cost you about 140 bucks Canadian. So <clears throat> a lot cheaper if it's US. Um, so it's ready to go for that, except the ores are not included in the base price. And then, of course, you can have up just the regular paddles and Paluski sells some really uh, very rugged and durable and very affordable paddles um, meant for exactly this kind of canoe. All right, so the Adirondack comes standard with three webbed ash seats. And so that's actually an upgrade from even some of the really expensive canoe companies. Um, the other really unique thing is that because it's got three seats, so of course it invites you to have more people, which is a wonderful thing. Uh, but the center seat is also necessary for the uh, oar operator. So that's kind of why it's here. But here's something unique. When I, when I had to carry this, I thought, oh no, this is going to be a huge pain in the butt. But the reality is that when I put it on my shoulders, this webbed seat actually sits right on your shoulders for a perfect balance and you don't even need a yoke because it's the, the depth of this canoe is it's I believe it's 18 inches it's deep enough so that your head won't hit the bottom of the canoe when it's upside down on you and so you've got this this uh, webbing which kind of acts like a cushion right it's on your shoulders it's easy to carry this from the perspective of comfort Right, so really, really good idea to have these three seats. I'm glad they did it. It's necessary for the oars and it works uh, wonders for not needing a yoke. All right, so the construction, of course, we'll get into the specs in a bit, but um, it's very, very durable, right? That's one thing that I really, really like about this canoe. I'm not so worried about it when I go into a river that might have some submerged rocks or something like that it's it's going to bounce off of them for the most part so that's that's one of the good things that you get with a boat that is a little bit heavier than my ultralight tripping kevlar canoes this is actually the first canoe that i've ever put on my vehicle that i don't need tie down straps on the bow and the stern I, I i had them all ready to go but realized that because it's only 12 and a half feet long it's I mean, it just needs two center straps, two, two tie down straps for your, you know, the bars that you put it on top of your vehicle, whatever, Yakima or Thule or whatever they're called, Thule, I don't know what they're called. So um, you don't really need to tie it down anymore. So that's just a, a, an issue of convenience. Love it. I'm all about convenience. Okay. So even though I said it's easier to carry than I thought it would be, that is true, but it's still not a bad idea to have a cart. Now it's not 
integrated with a cart like some kayak companies make. You have to get a cart, like a generic kayak or canoe cart that this can sort of sit in like a sling and um, that'll do wonders for you. Uh, even if you're strong enough to carry it, I'm all about making my life easier. So why carry it, you know, a hundred yards to the water or something, if you can just have a, a, a small cart, which can easily fit inside here because the capacity of this thing is amazing. One of the things that you have to have with a fishing canoe is something called initial stability. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know what initial stability is and secondary stability, that kind of thing. But if not, hey, I, you know what? I'll just give you a, a, a link up above and down below on, on how to check that out. But initial stability is important in a fishing or recreational canoe because you don't want everybody in here kind of going, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is it gonna tip? Um, you want everyone to feel secure and you wanna be able to cast without worrying that each time you cast the, you know, the inertia of your body is gonna you know, shake the canoe to scare everybody, right? So this canoe has it for sure. And the other thing is because it has a very pronounced single keel line on the bottom of it, it adds to that stability so that the boat doesn't rock back and forth. So it's giving you everything it can possibly give you to give you ultimate stability, including the excessive width for such a short canoe. Uh, it's about as wide as any canoe I've ever seen at this length. All right, so it's really meant for stability. Paluski is going all out to give you ultimate stability for your family, your kids, uh, as well as your own fishing passion. You'll want to something that does not you know, rock back and forth and give you pause or concern that you might, uh, you know, drop something in the water or maybe even lose balance yourself because of the tippiness of it. You're not going to get that with this canoe. Oh, and did I mention it's less than 1500 bucks? It's actually Canadian. It's 1400 bucks. So U.S. you're probably looking at like 1100, maybe 1150, something like that. Um, wow. <laughs> wow. Okay, so let's get into some specifications here, all right? So it's 12 and a half feet long, 12 foot, six inches. It's 37 and a half inches wide at the widest point at the beam. Uh, awesome stability, so we like that. It's 18 inches deep, all right? So that, that gives you a pretty high freeboard, which is the, uh, the, the, when you look at the side of the canoe, the distance between the gunnels and the water, that's your freeboard, and this gives you a maximum freeboard because of its uh, depth. And that's exactly what you want for a recreational or fishing canoe. The weight capacity for this is 950 pounds. That's what it can hold. That is really high for a canoe that's 12 and a half feet long. 950 pounds is something more like a 15 to 17 foot canoe will give you that capacity. Some of them are, are as low as that. So if you get down to 12 and a half feet, come on, that's a huge capacity rating. All right, the weight of this beast is 78 pounds. So it's not something you're gonna to wanna to portage on a regular basis, right? So that's your kind of the, the issue that you've gotta deal with. Uh, that's why I suggest maybe a cart, or if you're you know fairly strong, you can just slap it on your shoulders and uh, walk it down to the water. It's not that big a deal. Your biggest challenge is gonna be putting it on and off your vehicle without maybe wrecking your vehicle because 78 pounds is probably 20 pounds more than an average tripping canoe that's somewhere around 16 feet long. All right, so I mentioned it's got the motor mount. Um, you're looking at probably a maximum of a four horsepower motor if it's a gas motor or pretty much any electric trolling motor you want. I, I'm personally, I'm into the electric. Um, it's just uh, not as noisy and annoying. Can't really troll with a gas motor very nicely. It just, I don't know, there's something about it that kind of ruins the environment. Uh, I don't mean environment like uh, it'll pollute everything. I mean the peaceful serenity of a, you know, the northern forest environment. You got this putting going on, you know, with your uh, gas motor, a little bit of smell, and you still need a heavy gas tank somewhere. So I would suggest a good quality uh, Minn Kota or something like that. And uh, <clears throat> we have some reviews for those too. All right, so what is this beast made out of? All right, well, officially it's made out of something called triple laminated roto-molded polyethylene. All right, so that's just 
a fancy way of saying it's a, a really durable kind of plastic and it comes with three layers of construction which just I won't get into all the specs on that you can check it out on the website but anyway it's just really durable and it's something you don't have to be really scared of if you um, go on to any maybe slightly rougher water where you might bang it up a little bit on some rocks or logs or something like that right it's good to go for that okay so like every watercraft on planet earth you're gonna find good and bad stuff all right there's not a lot of bad about this other than i found three things that i can tell you that are bad about it um one of them is that it doesn't weigh in my ideal range of about 20 pounds ha yeah i know what weighs 20 pounds nothing i'm kidding uh, that's what i would like it to weigh but it weighs 78 pounds so yeah that's a bit of a challenge the second thing is kind of related to that and that is that you can carry it okay but it's probably easier even if you're strong and able to get a cart for it right and this does not come with a cart so that's going to be an added cost so anyway that's if you want to call that a bad thing that's number two and number three is that it has the ore locks but it does not come with the oars and in my opinion just an opinion uh that you really want those oars I don't I wouldn't buy this with no thought of getting those oars it's just asking for it because it's nice and wide like a uh, a rowboat and um, you kind of have that feel when you're sitting in it uh, and so it's just easier to do that when you're solo rather than trying to sit in the middle seat and use a solo paddle which is fine as well but you know if you want to tweak your experience for maximum enjoyment then get a set of oars which are not included so really those are the three bad things they're not horrible you got to deal with the weight um, carrying it to and from the vehicle uh, and then you know it doesn't come with the the oars all right enough of the blabbing all right let's get on the water and see how this thing performs All right, so this is not my ideal long distance solo tripping canoe, but it tracks pretty well for a 12 and a half foot canoe. It sure does. All right, on goes the motor. I'm sick of paddling. There we go. Oh, you gotta really reach back for this motor here. It's not beside you here. It's right behind you. All right, here we go. All right, baby, I can stand, I can stand. <laughs> okay, so I finally got this beast out on the water. What can I tell you about it? Well, one thing I can tell you is that it tracks really, really well. Um, it's hard to turn, which is really weird for a boat that's only 12, 12 and a half feet long. But the reason is because it's got that keel line, a very pronounced keel, it sticks out, um, and it really is meant to keep it from turning. So that works really well. I can tell you that it works well with three people in it. I had two of my kids, um, and I mean, it, it's, it's got room to spare and it has weight capacity to spare. So that is, is a really, really good quality for this boat for any recreational purpose, fishing, um, just out about with your family and uh, just having fun for an afternoon. Okay, so what else can I tell you about the Adirondack 12.6? Well, it fits a trolling motor electric motor but I think the engineers originally intended this to fit a gas-powered motor because the mechanics of the clamp for a electric trolling motor don't fit perfectly on there it needs it needs to like the, the, the clamp itself is too shallow it doesn't go down deep enough onto the motor mount and so um, you can modify that a little bit on your own but it's not perfect right out of the box I'm using it now it's okay but it could use just a little bit of a tweak it could be as simple as a 2x4 really so anyway it works but a eh, little tweak I think is necessary okay so it's starting to rain <laughs> so I've got about half a mile to go to get oh a fish just jumped um, I've got about half a mile to go to get back to my truck and uh, we'll see how fast I can make it with my Minn Kota Endura um, overall guys I, I, I like the boat I think it's great for family outings and for fishing I can stand up in it it's stable enough uh, it's not perfect it's fairly heavy the motor mount might need a little bit of a tweaking um, but otherwise for the price for less than 1500 bucks Canadian 
I think it's not a bad deal for someone looking for a canoe other than a tripping canoe that you're going to go portaging lake to lake. So let's get this out of the water and uh, <laughs> see how fast I can make it back home. All right, here we go. All right, guys, and as we're finishing up for today, just want to thank you for joining me today. And I want to thank Rob Grassi, my friend over at C&R Kayak in St. Catharines. He let me borrow his Paluski 12.6 today so that I can take it out and uh, tell you what I think of it. So he's got a couple of them left in stock. I don't know how much he's going to have left in the next couple months before the season is done, but check him out sooner rather than later. All right, check him out online, crkayak.ca. Tell him Pete sent you. He'll give you like, 80% off. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, Rob. If you're watching this, yeah, nobody's going to believe that. But, but, guys, Rob will give you a better deal. Most people in this industry sell stuff for manufacturer's suggested retail price, right? MSRP. Rob's going to do it for less because he doesn't have a big showroom. Uh, so he's he can afford to knock off a few bucks because he doesn't have any overhead to pay for. So anyway, it's good enough incentive as far as I'm concerned. If you're anywhere in Western New York, Southern Ontario, Check him out, crkayak.ca. My dad looks like a young, fit Santa Claus. Whatever, let's go.